pacey already. I'm a big pacer. Really? Whenever I'm even a tiny bit stressed, I pace. Next into the den are a London-based trio, Andrew Perkins, his wife Rennie, and South African-born Louis Cantoe Castro. We got this. And the product they're pitching today... Ooh, green lights. ...aims to make the modern world more accessible to disabled people. The problem that we address is something that I face on a, a daily basis. And there's one particular dragon in the entrepreneur's sights. Stephen's one of the favourites for us. His that experience in the digital sector, he could obviously do a lot for our business. But we hope to get five offers from all the dragons and to work with them to embark on this mission together. Hello, dragons. I'm Renny. Today I'm here with Louis and Andy, asking for £100,000 in exchange 5% of City Mass, the future of accessibility. One in five people in the UK have a disability. That's 14 million people. Globally, there's a billion people. Their spending power here is £274 billion a year. Uh, my parents have been foster-caring disabled children for as long as I can remember, so I grew up witnessing firsthand the daily struggles that they went through to do everyday tasks that, me included, take for granted. And so in 2018, Rennie and I quit our banking jobs and City Mass was born. We have one mission, to make the world accessible online and offline. Myself and many others around the world use the internet like anybody else. The difference is we need it to be accessible in order to make our user experience easier. But the reality is websites aren't designed with accessibility in mind. Due to inaccessible design, something as simple as purchasing items online proves extremely difficult. What we have is Assist Me, a website plugin that uses control how they like to interact with any website based on their needs and preferences. Whether it's to change the letter or word spacing for dyslexia, or the colour contrast in background for the visual impaired. And Mobility Map, a global platform providing accessibility information of places. Whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a cafe, whether it's a museum, whether it's a department store, etc. And the third one is AWARE, our automated accessibility audit tool already scan about one million web pages against web content accessibility guidelines. We can make every business accessible to everyone. So join us. If somebody would like to come and try out our technology, Louis is going to walk you through. Any volunteers? Three products to help businesses become more inclusive, <sighs> including a plugin to make websites more accessible for a range of disabled users, is the proposition from Andrew and Rennie Perkins and Louis Canto y Castro. We have uh, four presets that you can play with. Uh, the first one is for the visually impaired, so if you click on that, you'll see the colours become a little vibrant mm -hmm. and the letters increase as well. The entrepreneurs are seeking £100,000 in return for 5% of their business. If you click on the next adjustment, this is based around people who are colourblind, so sometimes they need different kind of contrast. Ah, thank you. Deborah Meaden knows all too well the issues that the entrepreneurs are tackling, and she's first with the questions. Hi, guys. Um, so my sister, and she doesn't mind me talking about it, she's in a wheelchair, she does complain about online accessibility. So can we really <coughs> hone in on that? Because the thing I would really like to understand is the range of disabilities that you're talking about. Louis, I'm going to ask you, what do you use this for? So I can use the internet by my voice only because I do have very limited uh, mobility problems. So my voice technology is what I rely on. And that plugin helps me get to places on a website if it's not labeled properly. So, example, if I want to click on my shopping cart that I've put items into, if it isn't labeled shopping cart, my voice technology is not going to find it. So I could rely on Assist Me to do that. OK, so how many of the range of disabilities do you think it covers off? 
Well, the, the four categories that we're working on are visual impairment, cognitive, mobility, and attention disorders as well. So you cover attention? Yes. Oh, it's just you can even stop animations from moving because if you have an attention disorder and something's moving, you're going to look at it. The trio's thorough approach to supporting the disabled community strikes a chord with Deborah Meaden. Now, Tuka Suleiman wants to find out if their laudable endeavours are also producing any cash. I love what you're doing. Thank you. But where are you on this journey? We launch this year, but it's already seen impacts. So re revenue-wise, we've done uh, £72,000 uh, in, in the past year. So give me an, an idea what it costs, who would pay for it, and is it a subscription? Is it a one-off payment? So a SISBE ranges from £30 to uh, £45 a month subscription. So the intention is to make businesses pay for this technology so that people like myself don't have to pay for the technology. Do you not think that it makes more sense for the user who has those needs to have their own browser plugin so that every website they go on has increased accessibility versus trying to make the case to a retailer that they need to spend X a month and make changes to their code? Yeah. It feels like an easier fight to say, here's a tool for everybody that, or yeah. across I, all websites. I think the problem with that approach is you're putting the emphasis on the disabled user. Yeah. They have to have yeah. this installed. They have to have equipment in order to use your website. If a business is genuinely trying to be accessible to everyone, they'll provide the tools. They'll make sure the checks are done. And how it will help the business is it will allow them to increase their engagement. We've had our assist me on one of our partners' websites and it increased her engagement by up to 2,000%. By outlining a philanthropic business model that helps prolong internet usage, the entrepreneurs attempt to put the wowsers into the Dragon's investment browsers. Peter Jones is a titan of the tech world and he's ready to give his verdict on the online offering. Congratulations for even coming up with this. I'm involved in a lot of online tech and I think this is very, very necessary. I understand the model and I agree with the model. You don't want the user to have to have any level of responsibility and have to pay for any such service of such a plug-in. But I think your strategy is actually incorrect. I think that your strategy should be far more akin to a plugin that is a free download for every website in the world. And from there, you move into an affiliate program. And that means that when companies are able to download your plugin for free, not 30 pounds a month, you then take income from transactional based activity that takes place as a result of that plugin. And all of a sudden, you've got something very interesting, especially if you provide this to some very big brands. I think that's interesting. But I have to say that I just feel parking a two million valuation, what you're asking for is a real shift in the marketplace. And those shifts don't come along very often. They take time, they're very slow burn. And I just think that this isn't an investment opportunity. And that's the only reason why, sadly, I'm out. But I wish you the very best of luck. Peter Jones thinks the entrepreneurs might be making a mistake with the business model of their web accessibility application. And he becomes the first dragon out. Does Tuka Suleiman have a space in his portfolio for the plug-in proposition? Look, I think Disability is a big issue, and I think you're doing a great job. But I think today you have failed, as far as I'm concerned, to actually put across the actual business proposition. You got a high valuation, and there was no, we'll do X amount in the first year, we'll do Y amount the second year. So you've not convinced me that, that in the short term, this is investable. 
So for that reason, I'm out. I love what I've heard today, what I've seen today, your passion for it. But I am not the tech one here. I mean, I've listened to the guys talking there, but they might as well have been talking Swahili, <laughs> the amount of it that I actually understood. And because my knowledge and experience in this area is so limited, I don't see what I can add to this business. So I'm going to tell you that I'm out, but best of luck with the business. My reason to love what you're doing, I think, is probably obviously because I've got first-hand experience of exactly the issues. So that side I completely get. But unfortunately, you know, the same as Sarah. I'm not particularly techie, and I just don't think I'm your natural investor. So I'm really sorry, but I won't be investing on that. Deborah Meaden doesn't think she's the right fit for the tech-based offering and makes it four dragons who've now exited the discussion. Stephen Bartlett is their last hope for investment and their favoured dragon. Will he provide some access of his own to £100,000 of his cash? You've committed your lives to a challenge that I think you're aware, if successful, can potentially help hundreds of millions of people, and that is something that one can only admire, because if you do succeed, the world's a better place. But my belief is that you're solving it in the wrong way. And I think that the approach of knocking on one door at a time, seeing this as a sales business and charging fees, isn't the right approach. And for that reason, I don't think it's an investable opportunity. So as much as I applaud you as entrepreneurs, and I do hope you succeed, for me, it's not an investment I can make today. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you so Good luck. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, Louis. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Best you. of luck with this. Andrew, Rennie and Louis entered the den hoping for five offers. They leave with five rejections and without the £100,000 they were seeking. Real problem, I think, wrong approach. Didn't go our way today, but we just need to take on feedbacks and, and achieve our mission. It was really great to see them understand the importance of it and we'll, we'll get there.